right, so we want to create a cute little head on this guy. So if I'm, doing a, if I'm doing a nice round head, I like to include the ears in on the head. So, and, and by that mean, I, I like to work them into it. Because I think when, you, when you're trying to do a really cute round head and then you let the ears grow long, it takes away from the look of the face. So all of a sudden, you're, instead of looking at that cute expression on the dog's face, you're looking at these long droopy ears. So I like to work the ears into the whole roundness of the head. And I'm actually gonna use, I'm, I'm gonna try the, um, I have the, the stainless steel snap-on combs that fit over. I, li I like the Bavura. This is my favorite wall cordless clipper. Um, it's got like a 90 minute run time. It's got torque control, so it has a little bit more power. But just how lightweight it is. Um, and I really like this. So I'm using the A snap-on comb, and I have, I have the setting of the blade on a 40 blade. So I'm just gonna kind of skim off some of this stuff on the sides. Hi, baby, it's all right. What size blade? I have the A, the A snap-on comb, and I have the the blade itself is on the 40 blade setting. It's okay, honey. It's all right. Ah, all right. All right. All right. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. So he's a little nervous with the clipper around his head. So without turning the clipper off, I want to just keep so he get used to the sound and the vibration. But as I'm rubbing the clipper on him, I'm also like massaging his ear, scratching under his chin. So it's, it's a good feeling instead of a scary feeling. Huh, sweetie? Oh, good boy. Excellent. Good job. You're okay. You know, when you get a dog that's, that is really nervous, you know, whether it be a puppy, um, you know, a dog that you're doing for the first time and they're a little bit nervous with the clipper, it really is going to benefit to try to take your time with the dog and not, not rush him through anything, not force him through it. Because um, you're hoping that, you know, this puppy's going to live to be 15, 16 years old and you want him to enjoy his grooming. There's nothing worse than, especially when you've got this adorable dog that comes into you and he hates you. It's, it's like such an awful feeling. Because I'm such a dog lover that when a dog doesn't like me, I'm, I'm, I feel really sad. It really, <laughs> it really bothers me. <laughs> Right now I have a, um, a Bichon that comes to me and nobody else has been able to groom this dog. She's, she's just a nut job and she's one of the cutest Bichons ever. And the last time that I did her, I got her on the table. She doesn't like anything touching her face. So scissoring, she's got all that long brown hair that she licks into her mouth. And so I, I comb it, she'll let me comb it. And then I have to pick up my scissors and I talk to her and I go snip. And I have to do it like really, really quick. And it just drives me crazy because I don't want to. I don't want to cut her. If, when I first started, I couldn't get near her eyes, so I, I just started using like thinning shears or scissors on her eyes. And now she's gotten to the point by doing this and taking my time. I've been grooming her for about two years now. And the other day when I did her, she started wagging and she got so happy to see me. I was like, Oh my God! I've really gotten somewhere with this dog. She actually likes me. She still hates grooming, but she likes me, so I'm okay with that. No, 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 that was a poodle and that was a really bad dog. <laughs> that was a bad, bad dog. Like, the, you know what, when I'm, when I'm doing a difficult dog, like I, rather than using a muzzle, I would rather use an e-collar because I think a lot of times, especially most, most times dogs are more fear biters. I mean, every now and then you'll get one that's just a bad dog that's, you know, just not right in the head or whatever. Yeah, the Elizabethan collars. So I put that on them, and I can do the feet, the nails, the ears, the entire body without, you know, and I, most times it's like the short-legged, twisted leg dogs that don't like having their legs done. And I really think it's because the dogs are hurting. I think, you know, we, we have the, the grooming loop on them, and you know they're gonna bite when you come down their legs, so what do you do? You pull that leg as far away from the head as you can. When you get those dogs with their front feet are facing their back, you're hurting the dog. And I found this out. I was doing this, this Shih Tzu one time, and he was just a nasty, nasty dog. He would bite if I even breathed on his front legs. And one day I was working on him, and I, and I had the clipper, and I was trying to, he was, he was having like a pretty good day. So I, I picked up his leg, and I just, I just barely lifted it off the ground. I didn't pull it, and he didn't move. 
And then I, and all of a sudden that stupid light bulb went off that, oh my God, this dog is hurting. Whatever groomers have been doing him, they've been trying to get away from his mouth and they're pulling on him. He's got arthritis and he's hurting. I, I, I have a new dog that comes to me and it's a Lhasa. And the first time I groomed the dog and I had to shave him with a seven because they, they don't like him to be groomed because he's such, such a problem dog. And they picked him up, and the woman started crying, and she said, this is the first time he's been, he's six years old. It was the first time he'd been completely groomed. She said he always comes home with one leg shaved or three legs shaved and not, or the body done and not the head. So this was like the first time that the dog actually had like a complete grooming. I've done him five times now, and he's bitten me three of the five times. But I'm, I'm going to win this dog over. This is my goal. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna, and I put this on the, on the longest setting, which is like the nine blade, and I'm just gonna scoop out in front of his eyes. And I don't like to go really close in this area. Um, he's got dark skin and dark coloring and everything, so it's not so bad, but especially when you have like a, um, a white dog, whether it be a Bichon or a Maltese, if you go really close in the inside corners, instead of seeing those cute little beady eyes, which is what you want to bring out, is that, that expression of the, the eyes and the nose, then you see in these little raw pink spots, and that's what your eye is drawn to. So I, I don't like to go super close in there, unless it's a dog that has like a lot of irritation and is having problems, and I have to go close just to try to keep it clean, and get it really clean in there. All right, so when I'm doing a round head, what I usually start with doing is I'm going to get, I, I kind of basically have like three circles. So I'm going to comb all this hair forward. And when I scissor this stuff off, anything that goes on beyond the end of his nose, I'm going to take off. And on the, on the front, I follow the curve of his lip line. And so I'm going to make this, this end of his nose is going to be a cute little circle. You're a good boy, fluffy, puppy, sparky, spiky. <laughs> okay, so I just kind of round it off just the end of his nose, pull everything forward, round off the end of his nose. Then my second circle is going to be like over his eyes and around this part here. So I'm going to comb this stuff forward. And I'm going to leave a little bit of an overhang so when I hold my shears, I hold them out at an angle. And I'm going to go from the outside corner of one eye to the outside corner of the other. Good job. Good boy. Excellent. Good boy. He's sinking. Good job. Good boy. Okay, so I'm just cleaning up in front of his eyes a little bit. Now this, this line here that I've started on his chin, I'm gonna work this into my circle, but I'm gonna actually hold his ear out of the way. So this, where I've started from, almost like from the center of his nose, so this lip line is gonna work its way right around into the back part of his head. So that's gonna be all part of my circle. It's okay, sweetie. Same thing on this side. Good boy. So I, I, I flip his ear back. Now this is something I wouldn't do if I were trying to do like a Bichon style head. I, I would want the cheek hair, the ear should blend in with the cheek, so you don't want to show definition. But when I'm doing a cute little teddy head, I'll flip that ear back and I will scissor in front of the ear. So this is all part of my circle that's going to come down and around up into the side of his head.
good baby. Good boy. Okay, and the same thing on this side. So I'm going to fluff the hair up. He's a cute little puppy. I love the color of these Phantom Mark puppies. Okay, now when I start getting my, my circle, it's always, <clears throat> when you're trying to get that nice round teddy head, when the dog pants, you always get this, this stuff that sticks up here on the side. So this works if I'm trying to do like a Shih Tzu head or any kind of teddy head. So once I kind of block him in and I have the size that I want, then I, I take this hair from, the, from his nose and I comb it straight back out. And when you do that, you'll see this little piece that comes out here on the sides and you just work that back into your circle. So that way, no matter whether the dog's mouth is open or shut, your, your circle's gonna stay the same. I apologize, this is a hard thing to do and to show you what I'm doing without standing on that side and having my back to everybody. So I just wanna keep, I'll just keep turning them so that you can see where we are so far. <laughs> Very good. Okay, now I'm not gonna cut in over the top of his ear like, like you would with a poodle. I'm just gonna scissor that. I'm gonna blend that right into the top of his head. And normally, the head is always the last thing I do, not the first thing I do, so. Um, we're gonna make Sue Watson blend the rest of it in the back there. Good boy. Okay, now I don't want his, see if you look at his ears right now, they're kind of, they're not, they're not in with the rest of his head so that your eye is kind of distracted. They, it, I think if, when you leave the ears long and scraggly, it kind of takes away from the cuteness. So I'm gonna take a little bit of length off of the ears. So I basically want to make him kind of the same length of his, as his chin. Good baby. It's okay. Yes, sweetie. Then when I want to when I want to check to see if I have all sides of the head nice and round, what I usually do is to to actually kind of eliminate the ears for a second. So pull the ears. Let me just take off a little bit of length here so his head will stand out. That's a good boy. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not sure what they're doing with him, so I'm, I'm using the longer snap-on on him just so they'll be able to still make something of him. Him off some of that. This dog is really cute. 
All right, so, so I just take the ears, and this works if you're doing a dog with prick ears as well as a, a dog with drop ears. So if you're doing like, a, like a, a round head on a Yorkie or whether the Yorkie has ears that stand up or ears that, that lay down, if I take both the ears and I just kind of pin them together, and it doesn't, it's not hurt, hurting the dog in any way, shape, or form, but I'll just kind of hold the ears and the end of the nose. It's okay. And then I can see what's sticking out of the, the side of my circle. He doesn't have legs. <laughs> Gotta use. Now I'm just gonna switch to my, my blenders. Because I want to just kind of tip the ears and just kind of blend them into my circle. Hi, ah, sinking again. It's okay. It's okay. It's not you. How much you leave on the dog's face is kind of your, your personal preference or, or actually what your client likes. You can go short, like you can, take, you can take a blade on the sides of the face if you want and still get a nice round look. Um, if I were gonna use a blade on the sides of the face and go a little bit shorter, I would just go from the corner of the eye all the way around, but I wouldn't come under the eye at all. I wouldn't make it like a poodle mustache and beard. I would just do from the eye back so you can still get that same look if you want to go a little bit shorter. Good job. Pull this ear forward. I take just the, like the front part of the ear, and when I pull that forward, the junk will hang down from behind the ear. So I just kind of take the hair on the very front corner of the ear and pull it towards the nose. And then you can see anything that's hanging out behind the ear. And that's always that stuff that, you know, you get the head looking really cute, and you always see that little chunk that hangs. Well, when you pull the ear forward, take the hair from the very front of the ear, it's okay. Good boy. And then just blend that hair in the back part of the ear that's all scraggly, just blend that into your circle. And with your, either your thinners or your blenders, you can, you can kind of really touch up a lot of the stuff that's sticking out just by looking, looking right on at them. Good boy, good boy. But I find when I'm trying to do a round head, if you comb everything forward, and then everything back, no matter how that dog puts its head, everything should fall into place. You know, and I find that, like, especially when I'm trying to do like a Bichon head, you know, I always tell people we have a rule in my shop that once the Bichon head is done and it goes back in the crate, nobody is allowed to look at the dog again. Because you know, no matter how much time you spend on it, it's gonna shake and that one piece comes out here or that one chunk underneath here. So we always say, okay, I'm done with this dog, nobody look. That's the shop rule. And if, you, if you're trying to get a, like a nice round head too, you want to be sure that you don't leave a lot of length on the chin. Because if you leave too much down here, then your eye is going to be drawn down. It's going to make the face look too long. So when you're trying to create a nice round head, most of that roundness is going to come from up here. And you don't want to leave a whole lot of length on the bottom side.
And you can, a lot of times too, you can go like even like a, a blade, you know, a shorter blade on the ears. And you want to make sure, if you're going to do the ears like super short, he's got tiny little ears. So his, he would probably look really cute if you shaved his ears and you just have those little tips that just kind of fold right into the circle. I'm, I'm not sure if they would want that on him, so I don't know if I can do it. But if, you, if you're doing it, you see that baby? What is that baby doing, huh? If you're gonna do that, you wanna be sure before you shave the ear how the ear lies. Because if you have one of those ears that flips back or you know hangs kind of funny, and sometimes one ear will do it and not both ears. So if you're gonna shave the ears, you wanna be sure that you know what, what's actually going on with them before you get in there and do that. Do you have babies at home? Huh? It's okay. Does anybody have any questions on doing the head? Like a different coat texture or anything? Like if I, if I, want, if I want to make sure, if, if it's a dog that has really thick ears and I want those ears to lie close to the dog's head, then I probably would take like a 15 blade on the inside of the ears all the way down and it would just allow the ear to lie a little bit closer and fit into your circle better. I don't, he's skittish with the clipper, so I'm not sure if he'll let me do that, but. So now I'm just, I'm just using my thinning shears just to kind of neaten up his ears because he's got kind of silky wavy hair on his ears. It's a little bit different from the rest of them. I don't like using a snap-on comb on the top of the head. And mainly one of the biggest reasons is a lot of dogs have cowlicks up there. So if you're going to use a snap-on on the top of the head, make sure that you follow the way the coat grows. So if, it, if you're going to come down, you know, say like on a drop-coated dog, if you follow the way the hair grows, if you just take a snap-on and go from front to back or back to front, you're going to end up with lines and you're going to have to go back and fix it all with thinning shears anyway. So. Um, I kind of like doing the top of the head by hand rather than using a clipper just because I think you can get a softer look. Um, and I'm, I'm one of those, like, you know, a lot of people, I, I actually get in trouble for using thinning shears too much. Um, but to me, I like that, I like that soft look and I'm, I'm not all about fast, I'm more about cute. Huh.